to God. You welcome in the presence of the Most High God. Uh, it's, 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 it's holy days, beginning uh, of holy days. I see many of the students are not around, some families are not around, we greet them wherever they are. Any family of these children is a holiday somewhere, like uh, Elder Andy and the whole John who are in Mpupo. We greet you from wherever you are in Mpupo. When you're going to watch us in the the God bless you where you are. And all the students have been going home. I don't know how, how many of them went home, but few of them have uh, actually sent me a message. Say, Pastor, I'm going home for one week or two weeks. Some of you, you don't know that. It's okay, but it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. You cannot leave the house and you can never say bye to Daddy. Daddy, I'm going home for two weeks and I'll be back. But now, when you go, you don't come, you don't inform. We still have also people who left, who went very far, but you're still members of this church, whatever they are. And this morning, when I was packing my car, I saw that car driving in here. I said, I know this car, this car. I know this number. Eight, I see this number. And I saw four people coming out of this car. People who are very, 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 very close to our heart. You see the human family. Give the hands of a posted head. Rogen human. Uh, Irene human. Rogerio human. And where is where is Yeah, you see. She went, she, 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 she's in the house, she can do whatever she wants. It's so nice to see you uh, being around here. All the way, all the way from PE, from a port in Elizabeth. Can you imagine? And people are still connected to the church. Yeah, this is family, and we feel really indebted in our hearts for us to love people like this, like them. Hallelujah. And there are so many, so many people from Pretoria, from Caltonville, people coming from Gladstock every Sunday to come to service here. We don't take it for granted. We really, really appreciate the lot. I'm happy that uh, uh, Dr. Mukenge has seen it for a long, long time now. Dr. Mukenge is here in the church. The family is always here, but you know Dr. Mukenge is also doing his, uh, his registered time. In psychiatry in Johannesburg. This is a future psychiatrist who treats the mad people around here. Dr. Mukenga, you are welcome in the house of God, your house and your family. We are happy to get you. And all of you, all of you, all of you. This month of October is a month of completeness. Hallelujah. I'm going to say to everybody who will be writing any exam in this October, you won't fail, you'll succeed. Now I'm, I repeat, you're writing an exam in this October. Whatever exam you write, this month of October you're going to pass it. Amen. Amen. If you go for an interview, if there's an interview, you go for that interview, you're going to pass it. Say amen. amen. If there's any contract that is somewhere ending, you just need to your hand of faith to grab it. Get that contract in Jesus' name. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying to somebody, there's a contract ending somewhere. Don't say I don't qualify for that. You qualify for that because you're a child of God. As long as Jesus died on the cross for you, he said it is done, you qualified. Nobody shall declare you disqualified. Because Jesus has qualified you already. Say amen. amen. Sister Dr. Diaka. Complete the sister, Dr. Pierre. This sister was doing, was doing a PhD. Yes. Pastor Solomon, she completed the PhD, sister Pierre. She now don't call it only sister. She was like, Pastor, now call me sister, Dr. Pierre. Sister, Dr. Pierre, you need to congratulate our sister. She's completed a PhD. Wow. No, you didn't do it well. You clap your hand properly. Tomorrow it will be your turn. You're going to also have your PhD, especially you students. I'm so blessed to be in a church where, with my small uh, degree, I have, I'm preaching to people with PhDs. My small degree. 
people with Asian sitting in front of me, listening to me. Now, when you preach to people with Asian, you must be meow. What they scrutinize everything. Even the sentence, the like sentence which they finish with it before they, they punish with the coma first and then, you know. But it's okay, it's good. We are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have been preaching or teaching about the true meaning of Christianity. The true meaning of Christianity. We have done part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, and today is part six. On the 10th of September, I started part five, and it was actually point number five because I was saying, just in the country for you, we cannot go through all the slides, you will make them lazy. Go and watch the services on YouTube if you've never been there. I said, a Christian, a true Christian number one, is a person who went through new birth. Meaning, he has been born again. That means mystery that somebody like a doctor of no, his name is Mr. The doctor who had an escape came to Jesus at night, asking Jesus, Now, what you say that the people are dead, does it mean that I must go back to the womb of my mother and be reborn? Jesus said, I'm talking about the reborn of water and spirit. Water and spirit. Meaning, receiving the grace of the word of God. God, by the Spirit of God, you receive by faith and something happened in your life. And for me, in 24th April 1994, I gave my life to Jesus. Now, when I give you the, my spiritual age, I'm already telling you my biological age. Now, you see, born again. I was 21 years old that I was born again. Yesterday, this week, I was ministering in a Rastenburg. Uh, I was in a church that was invited to a conference. That's what we went there to play their closing. And I was there to play it to Saturday. Yesterday, Saturday, we had, we had a service that went from 9 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock in the evening. Trust you me. We had a service in the church from 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> To seven o'clock in the evening. Then I left Rastafari around nine o'clock in the evening with my wife and Mary, our daughter. And we were there from Thursday. And the service yesterday, why it went like that? It was just, the, 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 the conference was about the of you. And in the morning, there was a service from 9 to 11 with the workers. And two o'clock, two, five o'clock for everybody. And we started the service in the morning, and the service never stopped. The weather service made the service of four o'clock and continued. And we were with Prophet Michel Badiwan uh, from Sweden, uh, who will be with us here on, uh, for a night of prayer. Put it in your, your diaries, please. I don't want you to lose. 9th of October, 20th, 20th October, today, Friday. Saturday, you don't know. If you will take leave that Saturday, you're going to be here from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. The glory of God will be in action. And I've seen God using that man of God, I know. Bring your family, invite people of your family. God will reveal things and deliverance will be done. People will be blessed. Hallelujah. Now, I was talking about what God can do in the life of somebody, new birth. And then we saw that true Christianity is also having a new life. Now, you live a new life. Not only that you live, but you need live now a new life. You no more live in the old life you have to end. It's important to understand it that when you become a Christian, people are looking at you. And the Bible says, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthians, he said, we have become the letters of Christ to the world. Let the world read Christ through us. Meaning, if I say I'm a Christian, 
That means I'm not surprised. And the people of the room in the Bible want to say, what is Jesus? What is Jesus? What is Jesus now? How how does Jesus behave? How does Jesus? If we see it in me, if Jesus is humble, and because he was humble, he is humble, let people see humility in me. Because Jesus is powerful, let the people see the power of Jesus in me. Because Jesus is a giver. Let the people see the generosity in me. A new life, but a life that shows the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I am speaking about the story of new loyalty. Number three, new loyalty. When you are in Christ, it's like you have a road in a new family, to a new family, and you say, I promise to be loyal. I promise. To never deceive our family. I promise to represent correctly our family out and way back. My loyalty is now to what God. I'm loyal to God. Meaning I follow the law of the house and I do only give my loyalty to me. I don't shake my loyalty. That's what Jesus said, no one will ever serve two masters. Amen. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. You have to serve one master. You have to be loyal to one master. Loyalty is very important. Loyalty shows your fidelity. Loyalty describes your faithfulness. When you are faithful, when you are faithful, you shall be loyal. You have to be loyal to your wife, be loyal to your husband, be loyal to your leaders, be loyal to God. Be loyal to your church. And we have seen after that that number four of true meaning of Christianity is about belonging to the Lord. Now that you are a Christian, you know that you belong to him. You belong to him. You belong to him. And we are Rema. Jesus is. Extension of Rema Bible Church. And the Rema Bible Church, great vision, summarized in three words. Become, be, believe, become, and belong. This is the vision that the Lord gave to the apostle of the church our father of the old Ramas church, we are now more than 150 branches all, all over the world. The last time I checked, it was 157, but it was two months ago. And the church is growing too quickly that we might already be at 160. I don't know. And uh, the vision that was given to Pastor Ray Macaulay was that he had to bring people Number one, to believe, to receive the word. Number two, to become, meaning become a child of God. Become what God wants you to be, become. And number three, you just don't become, but you belong now to the family. The family of children of God. The family of God. And number five, I started to speak about living by faith. Because number six, which will be the last one, it's about when you're a child of God, you become consecrated to him. I'm going to speak about consecration from next Sunday. But today, I'm going to conclude, finish the part of living by faith. Pack it there. Because after, after I finish with the consecration, I'm going to, on one Sunday, summarize for you the whole eschatology, the future where God is taking us from the cross. I want the church of God to understand from the cross, from what Jesus did. Where is the church going? A kind of a prophetic picture of what God has already said that will happen. When will millennium happen? When will the church go? When will this one happen? I want us to have a picture of understanding because a number of you don't come on Bible study and this is what we're studying on Bible study. We're almost at the end with that. But I feel that it's important, Pastor Solomon, 
that the church has that picture. And uh, I will do it before I close my teaching of the year that will be School of Faith. The whole remaining Sundays will be about School of Faith. Besides the time of Gathering of Champions, that will be end of November. Sunday, last Sunday of November to the last, to the first Sunday of December. It's so exciting to be in the house of the Lord to know that the Lord has, a, has plans for us. And those plans will come to be, to come to, to pass. We have to live by faith. And last, the last time I spoke to here, to, I said that living by faith involves two things. I wanted to teach you to speak about the meaning of faith. And number two, the life of faith. But I said being a Christian involves the element, the element of faith. The Bible says we are saved by grace, but by means of faith. Meaning without faith, nobody can be saved. The Bible to say again that all righteous shall live by faith. Because we live not by sight, but we live by faith. Even when you don't wear your glasses like some of us and you don't see, you see blurry from far there and you put your glasses, you see clearly, you don't live by faith, by sight. You should live by faith. Meaning things that you don't see, that you believe that God has done and God has done them really. Hallelujah. You live not by sight, but you live by faith. And the meaning of faith, I said three things. It involves the idea of belief, it involves the idea of confidence, and it involves the idea of fidelity. I've dealt with that the last time. I want us to go and finish point number two, the life of faith. Living by faith. And the life of faith involves these four things. I'm going to go through them today. Number one, it involves confessing our faith. Number two, it involves living by faith. Number three, it involves benefiting by faith. Number four, it involves maintaining our faith. When we say we live by faith, we have to make sure and to keep in our mind that living by faith will involve those four things I've mentioned. Number one, confessing our faith. When I say confessing our faith, I mean acknowledging our belief in Jesus Christ before others. Acknowledging. You have to be able to acknowledge your belief before other people. That's why Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 says, because in in the Amplified Version says, because if you acknowledge and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God. Number one, you acknowledge and confess with what? With your mouth. And number two, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. I said, then you'll be saved. There was a man of God all all the way uh, from Malawi that I met in Malawi. Uh, I gave them, uh, how do you call it, discipleship training school at Wawahem, Youth of Mission in Malawi in the refugee camp in Zaleka. He wrote me uh, a long message on, on Friday. Like, pastor, I've never seen, you, you always, you men of God, tell people, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. Receive Jesus Christ and as your Savior and your Lord. Is there any verse in the Bible that says it? Let's speak about it. Then I was like, yeah, it's very simple. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. The Bible says you shall be saved. Who saved is a Savior. But only he saved you when? When you declare in your mouth and you confess that he's the Lord. Then you receive how? In your heart. Now, when you receive him in your heart as a savior and a Lord, you are truly saved. The savior is the one who comes and takes you out of danger. The Lord is the one to whom you give now your new 
allegiance to say my loyalty belongs to you. I do what you want me to do. You, you have to have Jesus Christ not only as a savior but beyond him being your savior he must become your lord. Your lord meaning you follow him you do what he wants to do you accomplish his will you do what he says. When he speaks you say yes sir Yes, master, I will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not say I will do and you don't do. It's better you don't say that you will do, later you do, than to promise that you will do and you don't do. And there are so many people who like to please people by saying I will do and realize later that I am unable to do. And it becomes wrong. Don't promise something that you cannot do. Because God himself never promised anything that he cannot do. Everything that God has promised, he has done, he does, and he will do. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell your neighbor, pastor says, everything that he promised, he will do. Not he, the pastor, God. Everything that God promised he will do, he will do. Uh, I, I, I won't tell you that everything I promised I will do. Uh, no, 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 I will lie to you. Because I'm short of some means to do everything that I can. But I will do my best not to promise things that I cannot do. Hallelujah. Confessing our faith. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart. During the school of faith, I will teach you how, I will teach you about the motion of faith. The Bible says faith comes by what you hear. But now you, the problem with English, they are, it says about here, 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 but the two hears are different. In Hebrew, in Greek, they differentiate them. Even French also differentiate them. That way, you English people, you must also learn French. It says, la foi vient de ce qu'on entend. Faith comes from what you hear. Not, la foi vient de ce qu'on écoute. The, the hearing of écouter in French, the word in, in Greek says, that, that hearing means to perceive a sound. But faith doesn't come by only perceiving the sound. It comes by entendre. Hearing that comes is the hearing of your heart. You écoute with your ears, but you entend with your heart. You hear with your ears, but there is another hearing of your heart. The second hearing that produces faith is the hearing that means to be in agreement with the word that you have perceived by sound. You must not only hear the words. You must reach the point where you say, I agree with that word. Now it goes from the hearing of perception of sound. It goes by the hearing of being agreed and goes into your heart. And the Bible to say, the mouth speaks by the abundance of what? Of the heart. Once you have agreed too many times with God, with words that you keep in your heart, when you find yourself in a situation, now your faith will take in the depot, in the, in the, in the reservoir of the words that you have agreed with God. will take one and you take it out. It's like David going to the source, taking five stones, and putting in a small pocket. But when he arrived before Goliath, he needed only one stone to bring Goliath down. I'm speaking to somebody. There are so many words that you have heard, but you haven't yet agreed with many words. The word that produces faith in your heart is the word with which you have agreed. You say, God has said, I'm healed. I've been healed 2,000 years ago. Now, when you are sick, you don't say I'm sick. How can you say you are sick 
when you believe that God has already healed you. Wabona, the problem there is that people speak without really believing in what they speak. Verses have become just like even the devil says, I know you are saying that you think that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be scared. Because no logos will kill your Goliath. It shall be a rema. And rema is the revealed word of God out of the letter that you have read. That's why Paul says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. I chase you in Jesus' name. You are scared of the devil by chasing him in Jesus' name. You are even scared of cockroach. Hey. Cockroach, cockroach. You are scared of a cockroach. You are scared of a cockroach. Look, your neighbor asking me if, oh, hey, if she's scared of cockroach. <laughs> scared of a cockroach. <laughs> if I, yo, in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus' name, cockroach. The size of your enemy will determine the size of your weapon. It's a mistake to use an AK-47 to kill a mosquito. I don't need an AK-47 to kill a mosquito. A mosquito should be just killed like this. It's killed. Don't use the name of Jesus for some light things that not need the name of Jesus. A cockroach needs just to be step on, finish and clear. In the name of Jesus, I chase you away. But you're chasing away when you're not yourself, you're going back. The person who chases away, they go forward. They don't go back. <laughs> Meaning sometimes you confess things from your mouth that are not in your heart. That's what I'm telling you here. Faith doesn't come by things that you perceive in your ears. It comes by the things that, the word that you have perceived and you have agreed on and you keep in your heart. Confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart. Amen. Repeat it with me, confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart. Something we must do as a condition of salvation to confess in our mouth and to believe in our heart. To confess in our mouth and believe in our heart. We had a whole lesson about salvation in Bible study. And one question that was asked was, Pastor, now, now that salvation comes when you believe in your heart and you confess in your mouth, what will happen to somebody who's dying, who cannot speak, and to whom you speak the word of God, and you tell him, confess, believe this word, and confess it. And that person cannot confess. Because he cannot speak anymore. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The speaking is spiritual. I repeat, the speaking is spiritual. The hearing is spiritual. In reality, in a person, is the spirit first. Thus, the spirit of the person believes in the word that you want to say now. If the, the body cannot say, but my spirit has confessed, I'm saved. You don't understand me. You know that you can chase the demon without saying, oh, in the name of Jesus. But your spirit has chased the demon. Spiritual men, be spiritual. Don't be carnal. Live like spiritual people. Dominate in the realm of spiritual, of spirit. And the spirits recognize the spirit. Ah, yeah. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying the spirits recognize the spirit. When they come to attack in Middle Park, they will know that there is a house they won't reach. Because there is a higher spirit here named Jean-Claude Dagano. They cannot come here. If you meet them, go and ask them. And I'm not saying to boast myself. I'm saying because I know in whom I've believed. I know whom I've clothed. I don't only clothe, before I clothe my clothes on me, I've clothed Jesus Christ. When they see me, they see Jesus Christ. When they, were, when they were enter my house, they see fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
confessing our faith. Something we do throughout our lives. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 to verse 33. He said, therefore, the one who confesses and acknowledges me, the one who does do what? Confess and acknowledges me before men. You acknowledge me before men as, as who? As Lord and Savior. Listen to me. Affirming a state of oneness with me. You have received Jesus Christ by how? By confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. But now when you start to live your life, every day what do you do? You still acknowledge him as your Savior and your Lord. You affirm that you are one with him. And Jesus said, for that one, I will also confess and acknowledge him before my Father who is in heaven. Meaning what? If I walk around Pochefstrup, Kel Kleckstop, Kaltonville, Fantesdop, around Johannesburg, Pumalanga, Limpopo, Kezeden, and I walk around, I tell everybody, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. I am one with him. Jesus says, because you've never been ashamed of me and my name in public, I will also confess your name before my God. When I go out, I say, I belong to Jesus. Jesus also in heaven tell they speak to his father. Father, Jean-Claude belongs to us. He intercedes for me in heaven because in, on earth, I confess him. Why are, you, why are you ashamed of Jesus? I think uh, Brother Emmanuel, when he was speaking last Sunday, he spoke about this, this reality of confessing the name of God and Jesus confessing you in front of in, in God. And it, it gave us the, the advantage. Say, imagine Jesus confessing your name to God, his father. That some of us here, we are ashamed even to be called children of God. They don't even know that you're a child of God. In your classroom, they don't even know that you are a Christian. You never even told them that you go to church. You know that? You never even inform your neighbor next to you there that there is Jesus in heaven who saved me. You never even spoke to a single person. If, if, even that helper who works in your house, he doesn't even know that you preach God, the gospel, that you're a child of God. You never spoke to them. Well, you, you understand what I mean? Even when they, there's outreach, like, like yesterday, Saturday was outreach, but they, uh, nobody could come here because of many situations. And the leader asked us to, to, to preach the gospel where we are. They even told you, don't come to church. Wherever you are, just speak. Preach to somebody. I've seen Brother Emmanuel posting on a, a Rema outreach group that he spoke to four people who received Jesus. He was there with Sister Paul. Uh, but, but they were the two only. When, when, when will you understand that Jesus is looking for somebody who confesses him, who acknowledges him in the presence of everybody? And you, you, you always have good excuses. I know, I know. I had family gathering. You know, it's Saturday, I was resting. My Monday to Friday, it's hell. I'm tired on Saturday. I have to have my time with my family. It's good. Have the time with your family. Have the time with your family. But make sure that the time with your family doesn't take you to hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Throughout your life, living the life of faith, you must be able to confess your faith to somebody. I always tell you, wherever I am in a flight, when I sit on my seat, the seat that they've given me, 5G, 5E, 11X, whatever, when I sit, and you come to be my neighbor. We don't know each other. Be sure that I will speak to you about Jesus Christ. I don't have time to speak to you about politics, about weather, about wherever you come from. I don't need to know where you come from. From an island or from heaven, it's not my problem. 
My thing is to, my question first, do you know Jesus Christ? Can we talk about Jesus Christ? When last did you feel in your heart that you have to speak about Jesus to somebody? I don't know why I'm insisting on that. But I think God wants to speak to somebody. Don't be ashamed of him. Speak about him. When you speak about him, he confesses you there. Hallelujah. I've told you, I'm your pastor. If you are here, you're a medical doctor like me. I preach at least to 80% of my patients. At least. There's not a single day when I've seen 10 patients and five of them didn't hear me telling them about Jesus. I always find a loophole somewhere. I know the policies that I cannot try to enforce my belief to somebody that I'm treating. But I find a loophole somewhere. Like on Friday, a lady came to me because she had a problem and she's 43 years old and the sauna was done. She had bilateral uh, ovarian cyst with a uh, uterus full of myomas. Then she, she, you know, she has one child, 21 years old. And from, she, she never got married. She got married three years ago now. And the husband wants a child. And then they've been trying for three years, no child. Then I'm like, Okay, okay. No, I went to this doctor. I went to that. I went and somebody told me uh, that you're a specialist. I must come to you. I'm not even a gynecologist. I don't know who told him that I'm a specialist for that. Then I understand that I'm a specialist on something else. Yeah, I spoke to her about Jesus. I say, I've heard that you have tried this gynecologist. You went to this hospital. You did this. Can I propose you somebody else that you haven't yet tried? Let's pray together. And we prayed in my room. What has happened? I don't know. It was Friday. I'm waiting for good news. One day that she tells me that she's pregnant. Dr. Kazongo will tell me that that womb is, is full of myomas. Because I sent them, I sent it to GOP. That was the answer I gave her. It's fine. It's okay. I believe that God can give a woman, a, 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 give a, to a, a, a woman who doesn't have a womb, a baby. And I've seen it in my life. I'm not, taking, I'm not talking stories that I don't know. There is a woman that, that, that had hysterectomy done. Where? At Johannesburg Gen Hospital. My wife knows the woman. And I was talking to the man of God, the pastor, the husband, of, on the phone, we in Christiana. He says, man of God, now we have only two kids. We still have one to have kids. Says, God, because the woman is bleeding, let them remove the womb. It doesn't stop God to give you children. And that woman, after the womb being gone, how many children did she have? Two of them. The next time when she conceived after three years, she went back to, she went to a CHC in Hillbro. They sent it to Johannesburg Joe Hospital because they couldn't understand. They take the file. They say, is this, is this your name? Yes. Is this date of birth yours? Yes. Is it you were here three years? Yes. But Dr. Naidu, gynecology specialist, did hysterectomy. Hysterectomy means we remove the womb. And for you to fall pregnant, you can fall pregnant because it comes from the tube and the man. But for the baby to be, to, to, it's in the womb. Now this doctor says, yeah, we think this pregnancy is an abnormal pregnancy. You know, people with science who don't have belief in God, they will tell you things that they want. It's fine. It's abnormal. An abnormal pregnancy, let's see. But at the end, she did uh, NC at John, Johannesburg General Hospital until the end. They said, yo, you have to do a cesarean section. They were so surprised. The womb was clean with no tight, no, nothing. The baby came out and this woman delivered twice. Nobody can tell me that it's impossible. Impossible for men. The God that we preach is everything is possible with him. I say everything. I say everything. Is able to get a Labrador to kill a pit bull who has attacked me. And Matthew was like, Pastor, I've never, I'm 66 years old now. I've never heard a Labrador killing a pit bull. You don't have to have a bout. With you, the stories must start with you. Because when you live as a man of faith, you are an instrument in the hand of God for the glory to be announced. I thought you were going to say amen.
Confess your faith, people of God. Confess your faith. What do you believe in? Whom do you believe in? I believe in God and his name is Jehovah Pandanjila. He's able to make ways where there's no way. I believe in a God who can make a student get married to a woman like this, like this beautiful woman here. I was a student, fifth year medical school, no bursary, no salary. I got married by faith. I believe in God who can bring money in the house where there is no money. And money appearing in the house. <laughs> Somebody says, miracle money doesn't exist. I come just from Kikwit now. I had a, a, a crusade in Kikwit, in Congo DRC. 400 kilometers from Kinshasa, or 5 and 540. There's a gentleman on the second day when I was preaching. He was released from the prison. Now from Kikwit, he doesn't have any family member. He has to go to, to Kinshasa. He had a small bag on. He came when I was praying for people to receive Jesus Christ. He received Jesus Christ. And it's, that's all. I said, now anybody who wants a miracle from God, you are sick, whatever, start to ask to God. It's, it's in video. I have a video on this phone. He received the m -Pesa, like a e-wallet. There, when he was praying. He doesn't know from whom that money comes. But he needed money to have transport to go to Kinshasa to meet his families. He was just from jail the same day he received Jesus Christ. When you're a child of God, everything is possible. I say everything is possible. I repeat, everything is possible. Now, I know somebody's thinking now, Pastor, money coming like appearing. Yes, yes. It's not the first time. Jesus did it. His disciples, they need to pay what? Tax. And they didn't have money. Judah, Jesus was very rich, huh? Judah was taking, was keeping the, the, the account of Jesus. And says there's not enough money to pay tax. You know how much tax we, we're paying in South Africa? A lot of money. I pay 42% of my salary. It's a lot of money. With, with uh, three or four zeros. Now, this money, they didn't have in the account. Jesus said, Peter, go and do what? Fish. And the first fish that you're going to get, open the mouth money will be there. If, it, if I tell you to go to do, you say, Pastor, this is now magical. This is magic. This is sangom. This is muti. How can you bring your God so little that he's unable to do things that you need? And they went, they got money enough to pay the tax. Hello? Are you listening to me? Now, if Peter didn't have faith, he would have said, ah, Jesus, I'm not going there. This is madness. I need money. Give me money. You send me to fish. That's the problem with you. Faith will never happen without action. Uh, in the motion of faith, after you have spoken, you have to act. You have to do what you are unable to do to show that you believe that God has done it and you will see it fulfilled. Uh, let me continue. Point number two. <laughs> Living by faith involves Living by faith. Meaning, when we say that we live the life of faith, you shall be every day living by faith. I don't know, you live by what? Some of us live with their small salaries. Even if you get 120,000 rent per month, it's not enough for your life. That's why you'll see uh, doctors earning 80, whatever, 60, 70, whatever, 40,000, but they still sleep out night and night because it's never been enough. The enough is not in what you earn. The enough is in whom you believe. The enough is not in what you can produce. The enough is in what God has said he can give you. But do you believe that he can give that to you? Now listen to me, the Bible says, in vain, you wake up early morning to go to seek for the bread, to go to work hard for you to get bread. God says, I do give to my children. When? When they sleep. You don't have to be awake always for you to get. God is able to give you when you sleep. Sleeping here meaning rest. Rest meaning that you believe in what God has done already. Rest meaning you believe in what God has already done. 
Many don't sleep anymore. Because when they go to bed, what will happen tomorrow? The car will be repossessed. What will happen tomorrow? I didn't pay this loan. You know, some people, on the day of pay, they wait, until, they wait midnight. From when money comes in, they move it quickly to another account. Before <laughs> coming 7 o'clock, Foshini takes the money, uh, Woolworth takes the money, Pick and Pay takes the money, Pep takes the money, Ebatu. Even if we, money's gone. Because you take this by loan, shoes by loan, this lay by, that one. This is a cheap life. I prefer to live with what I have, having even one pair of shoes, than going to get three pairs of shoes on account. No man, no man, content yourself with what you have and believe in God who can give you more. Don't put yourself in the system where you become now tied up. I was speaking to my wife. I told her, I'm working and I'm going to reach that point where I will pay off all my debts and will live without debt. I'm sorry to tell you I have debt. I still pay a car. I still pay houses. Yes, it's fine. I still pay the loan here, here. But I have to pay off all those debts. I, I realize that this is not the life of faith that God has called me to live for. That's why the day God will tell me, Jean-Claude, stop working as a medical doctor. Be full-time in ministry. I won't hesitate. It won't the gov- it's not the government of South Africa that will make me live. It's God in heaven. And I'm sorry to say it. I don't count on anybody else than God. We should reach a point where we put our full faith in him. Can I give you a secret? Note it if you are writing. Everything in your life that you're gonna, you, you elevate to the level of God, God will fight it. Ah, I'm going to repeat it until you understand. If you think that your salary will give you everything that you need, that you start to neglect God, God is able to put you with no salary so that you come back to him. You realize that he, can, he is only the one you need. I repeat, everything or everyone in your life that you elevate to the level of God becomes an idol. God will fight it or fight him. There are two things that I wanted to say. I cannot say them on the pulpit because it's going to go on the social network. I don't want people to know about that. Being a pastor of the church, if you start counting on one person, I know that it's month end. This person's salary is 100,000. He's going to give 10,000 this month. We're going to get that money. God is able to fight the salary of that person. You are putting that person in jeopardy. That's why I advise you to give tight in the church as I tight myself. I advise you to offer as I offer myself. But I don't count on whom give more, whom give, who doesn't give. Because they think here, I don't want in any time to live by sight. I want to live by faith. I want to know that if, even if nobody gives money, that God is able to give. And God gives money through you. Because he has blessed you and you have to accept and understand that you become a steward of God to give also. Hallelujah. That's why I do my best not to have a service where I will come here to say, who oh, shall give this, who shall give that, who shall give that. I, I do. I know. God knows so many times how many times I have to pour money from my pocket to give. And it does. It's it never been a problem for me. Because for me, if God has given me, I'm happy to give also. I've never checked to know who has given, who didn't give. It's not my problem. But I know as your pastor, I have to teach you the truth. To tell you shall give. And before God, my right hand is up. I will never ask you to do something that I don't do myself. I won't ask you to tithe if I don't tithe. I won't ask you to give if I don't give. I won't ask you to pray if I don't pray. I won't ask you to fast if I don't fast. I won't ask you to fear God if I don't fear God myself. It won't work. Because the message is not about what I say. The message is about my life. 
Can I repeat it? No gospel that has never changed you will change somebody else that whom you preach. The gospel must change you first before it becomes able to change other people. Living by faith. Living by faith. Meaning trusting in the works of Jesus. The works of Jesus. Trusting in what? Trusting in what? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 3. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. Listen, verse 3. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, what? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Living by faith involves trusting in the works of Jesus. I have to trust that Jesus died for me. He died for my sins. I have to believe that Jesus died on the cross so that I'm, be, I, I, I'm healed for the sick, from, my sick, from the sickness. Trusting in the works of Jesus. But beyond trusting in the works of Jesus, we must also trust in the words of Jesus. Trusting in the works, W-O-R-K, and trusting in the words, W-O-R-D-S. We trust in the works, what Jesus has done, but we trust also in the words, what Jesus has said. Living every day, believing and accepting that Jesus has died already on the cross for me. I don't have to die twice. It's illegal for you to live in sorrow twice. Because Nahum chapter 1 verse 9 says, sorrow or distress shall not come twice. If it comes once, it's because you didn't know Jesus. Now that you know Jesus, it shall not come. Tell to sickness. Tell to sorrow. Tell to distress. Tell to poverty. It's illegal for you to come to me because me, I've been already saved by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you believe in your heart? Then confess in your mouth. Say, I shall not die. I shall live. And I, shall, I will see the wonders of the Lord. Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Go to bed and sleep. Sleep well. If they will come to repossess the car, so be it. Let them take it. Don't give yourself a sleepless night because you're thinking of the calculations that you shall do. That way, now the following day, the devil knows that you need money. The bank will call you to propose you overdraft, to propose you another uh, credit card. And you'll be happy to get another credit card. I'm not, I'm not proud to tell you that I have credit card. But all money, that, every money that you use from your credit card, you, you, enrich, you are making somebody rich in the bank. You're going to use 10,000 in the credit card. They're going to take out of that 15,000. If you don't pay in 30 days or in 45 days. Now, you'll find yourself in a cycle. Because the credit card will be there. To tell you, hey, you don't have money, but I'm here. Ask my wife, where, where are my credit cards? Where are my credit cards? I hide them somewhere, somewhere in the bedroom. I, I'm just waiting to pay them off and then start to cut them. I've cut already one. I had three. One I've paid off, I've cut one. I still have two. But I'm saying I'm working towards that. To go in a life without that. Amen. Thank you for believing me. Trust in the works of Jesus, but trust also in the words of Jesus. We can live a good life with Christ without this system of this world. Can I say something to our brothers who live in, in the, the location? I'm mean, not only the location. I don't think Mashonisa are only in the location. Mashonisa are also in town, eh? Mashonisa. You know Mashonisa? All over, eh? 
I once had a woman. She's getting a disability grant. And then she was telling me that day that a card was with Mashonisa. Because she didn't have money on the 14th of the month and she took 400 rand from somebody who gonna, at the end of the money, take the 400 plus 200 of interest. Which bank gives you 50% of interest in 14 days? And for him to make sure that you get money, it takes his cards. There are people having the cards for, of, of five, five, ten people. On the day of Sasa, some of them are there at the ATMs withdrawing money that is not theirs. It's money of an old man, old woman at home. They have paid him by government 1.8 and you take 800. And that mama, the following month, will still be short. And this time not of 600 rand, short of 800 rand. And she goes back again to Mashonisa, 800 for 1.2. And the last thing, the third month, the all 1.8 is taken by Mashonisa. Poverty is bad. We don't have to clap our hands for poverty. We have to work to go out of poverty. And brethren, let me tell you, I believe in what they called American dream. The American dream is the thing that somebody believes I can go from no nothing, from nowhere, and go become somewhere. Don't have an excuse that your father never had a PhD for you not to have a PhD. Not, don't have an excuse for you, that your father never owned a house for you not to own houses. Why don't you say Amen. Because you don't believe me. Okay. Let me stop there. Say, Pastor, you're speaking too much. Why can't you just stop this, this sermon of today? I'm preaching to myself then. Jean-Claude, you must believe that from where you are, as poor as you are, you can become as richer than any of the richest men in the world. But the problem now of wealth, why do you want to be rich? Why do you want to be rich? <laughs> Yesterday I heard Prophet Badibanga praying for a lady. Then he asked to that lady, mm, the Lord tell me to pray for you, but tell me what you want me to pray for you for. This lady said, I want money. Then the prophet says, money for what? Then she's like, I don't know. Now, how can you want money and you don't know what you need money for? That means one day you get that money, you know what you're going to do? You start to buy sweets, lollipop, ice cream. The ice cream that you bought, you always buy 150 here in Poch. Won't be nicer. You have to drive to go to get the, the ice cream in Santon. It's better. I'm telling you, I told Pastor Solomon, I think, I have one of my patients. She's pregnant now. She comes to do, she's my, in my high-risk clinic in my clinic. I wanted to do sauna on her. She said, hey, doctor, don't, don't worry. My, hus my, my husband said, I'm going to do a 3D sauna in town. And then I'm like, okay, do you have a medical aid now? She said, no. My husband just got paid from road accident fund. And she was happy to tell me, we got two millions. I said, oh, glory to God. Yes, my husband bought three cars. Oh, we got two million, we bought three cars. <laughs> the three cars were going to go out here, written off, written off, written off. No, we bought also one house in Promos. Oh, one house only with two million. That means the money is gone. If you buy one house, three cars, and you start to go for three dimension sauna, and she says she won't deliver and promotion. She's going to deliver in private, paying cash. Wow, good life, huh? But these are people, these are people who don't understand what they want for their life. Because you don't know what you need for that money that you need. And God is not a waster. He will not give you what you're going to waste. Come to God with a plan. If you give me money, God, give, ish, give me six million. I'm going to pay two million to the church to pay out this bond. 
accept this lease. <laughs> what beautiful plans. And God says, Ish, I find myself in this plan. Let me give the money. The life of faith is one that seeks to live in harmony with the teaching of Jesus Christ. Number three and four and last involves benefiting by faith. Meaning enjoying the blessings that come from a life of faith. Such as joy, peace, hope, power. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith. That by the power of the Holy Spirit you are bound in hope and overflow with confidence. In what? In his promises. When you live by faith, you can have peace. Joy. You know, joy is not happiness. Happiness is what you get from out. You, it's what comes from outside. You are happy because you have got something. But joy is streaming from inside. I'm joyful even when I don't have money. Because the Holy Spirit tells me, Jesse, there is hope. Tomorrow it will be better. You have joy, peace, hope, and you can trust in the Lord. Number last to finish, living by faith involves maintaining our faith. Meaning when you start to believe, maintain the faith. Don't lose faith. Don't depart from living with God like some other people. Work for your faith. Say, God, I believe in you. I don't want to lose my faith. Oh, now that I put my glasses, I see David. David, you are here. God bless you, David. Long time that I've seen you in church. Lovelyn. That's why Lovelyn has been smiling, smiling. I couldn't understand. No, her husband is next to her. <laughs> Living by faith. It's maintaining our faith. In my conclusion, I'm going to ask you a question. No, I'm going to first say, a Christian should live or take faith seriously or very seriously because it is essential to our salvation but also to our life. Now my question to you, are you living by faith? Do you live by faith? Do you believe what Jesus has been, what has been written about Jesus Christ in the book? Do you believe in what has been written about you in the book? Do you have confidence in Jesus to the point to say whatever he said is able to do? Do you, by any way, show fidelity to him to say you can be trustworthy, that Jesus can trust you, that you believe in his word? Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes and pray. Can you answer to the questions that I've just asked now? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you live a life of faith? Or do you live by sight? Do you live a life of faith or do you live by sight? Open your eyes first before you pray. <laughs> when, I, when I'm looking at the, the human, I remember the human must drive back to PE. I remember one of the testimonies that I have in my life. I was coming from church in this building. December 2015, 2016. There was a wedding in Cape Town on that Monday, the following Monday. And a young brother, spiritual son of mine, in Cape Town, was getting married. And uh, we, we just bought our, our Mercedes. It was 2014. We bought the car in, I think, one year before that. Then he was like, Papa, the day I get married, I want to be driven in this car, in your car. Then I promised him, yes, I will do it. Because this young boy has been very loyal to me and very faithful to God. Now, it was a Sunday morning like this. Service finished at 11 o'clock. I have to be there before midnight. I drove from here to Cape Town. My wife, she does, long, she does like long distance like that. She stayed. I drove alone. Now, it was like people were here. I didn't have money. I poured petrol a full tank. And then the only time I could have, have money, it would only be from midnight. 
when there will be a check paid on my account and I'll get that money. You understand what I mean? Now I reach, I think they are, or somewhere close to the way, where you exit of the R. It says to me, no, it was not there. It says to me, I still have, on the GPS says, I still have, I think, 600 kilometers to drive. And the, con the how do you call it, the, the fuel container, yeah, she says, says to me, I have for 450. Now I'm short of 150 or 250 kilometers. Then I'm like, God, I don't have money to buy fuel. And then the Holy Spirit says to me, why do you need fuel to drive to Cape Town? You need God to take you there. I kept on speaking in tongue. Until I arrived in Cape Town, my fuel level never got down of that 450. It remains the same. <laughs> I don't know what you are going through in your life and what you need. Somebody will say, maybe... The system of your car was not working. I know how you start to think. It was a new car. It was a Mercedes, a new one. <laughs> it happened that it remained at 450 and I drove 600 kilometers, never comes down. Maybe you say you, you're short of money now and you don't know how you're going to live the rest of the month. I'm telling you, you can believe in God and he's able to take care of you. Can you pray in Jesus' name? Say, God, if you have done so to this man, why can't you do it to me? I need to live and see your miracles. No, pray. Pray seriously, brother. Say, pray seriously, my sister. The life of faith. The life of faith. Don't look at your salary. Don't look at what you earn. That's why you have a problem to decide to say, I'm going to give to the church 10,000 rand. Because you look, ah, I only earn 14. I only earn 13. How will I give 10,000? But you can if you are a man and a woman of faith. Because God will come towards you. Rabra kasata. I'm not saying that you should live a, a, a flashy life. You have to live the life of God. But you cannot live lower than the level where God works for you. You are a child of God. You are a king and a queen. Marabraba Sata. I cannot eat cabbage every day. Don't eat cabbage every day. There's better than cabbage. There's better than cabbage. I'm just talking our language. To say you can go to the next level. It's possible, brother. It's possible. It's very possible. By faith, you can reach that. Marabraba Sata. There is a brother in this church. I see him tithing every month. And every month, his, his tithing goes higher. Every month. That brother challenges me. I think he, he, he just lives by faith. And he sees God blessing him. Even said for this year, he saw already four increase. I don't know if now it's the fifth now. But people of God, this thing can happen in a place where nobody receives an increase. For you, you, re you receive an increase. How will it happen? I don't know. By faith, something can happen. Marabrosa. Kerabrababasata mandari ebre shetakana rabosha. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray and pray. God said, live by faith. Don't live by sight. Don't look at what is around. The sickness that you see in your family won't reach you. Somebody said, everybody in my family has hypertension. Everybody has this problem. No, I said, you don't have it. You will never have it. I destroy and I cut this generation curse. You are not diabetic. You are not hypertensive. You're going to sleep and sleep well without sleepless night. Anxiety, depression shall go away because you should live the life of Jesus Christ. Even in the middle of winds and storm, you're going to sleep in the ship without being disturbed by anything. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If you're in this place, and you decide to say, God, Pastor, I want to live a life of faith. But uh, I've, I can feel that uh, I'm short of faith. What you have preached there challenged me now. I want to live a life of faith. Where you are, just take your right hand, put on your heart. I'm 
going to pray for you. I don't have to see you. God sees you. If you are here, you say you want to live by faith. And you feel that you are short of faith. And you say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Just your right hand on your heart. I'm going to pray for you. God sees you. God sees you. I don't need you to come here in front. I don't want you to stand where you are. I take a decision to say I want to live by the words. Believing the word of Jesus, but believing also the works of Jesus. Believing the words of Jesus, believing also the works of Jesus. Lord Almighty, you see my brother. You see my sister. They come here before you, not before me. They believe in you is able to do what you've done. You have done with many things, with many people. The few and small testimonies that I've given, if it's nothing that you can do. Uh, it's nothing in what you can do. There are more that you can do, God. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that somebody here lives by faith. And he sees you coming to his rescue. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that my brother and my sister who has decided to live by faith continue and sees what faith will proclaim to me. The Bible says, my righteous shall live by his faith. Let his faith, her faith, takes him or takes her to places in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If you are here, you never received Jesus Christ as a Savior, as your Savior and Lord. You are here. Jesus is not your Savior and Lord. Where you are, you can lift up your hand. I'm going to pray for you. That you confess him with your mouth. And you speak, you believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord. Lift up your hand where you are. Olivia, I see you lifting your hand. Your hand. Olivia, you want to receive Jesus. <laughs> she lifts her hand. You want to receive Jesus. I see a hand here. Everybody who has left, lift up a hand. Can you stand up where you are? Please, quickly. If you lift up your hand, stand up where you are. Thank you. Stand up where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Olivia, if you were serious, you would have stand up now. You lift up your hand. You see Olivia stands up. Glory to God. Can you give to God a hand of applause? We're going to pray with the people who are standing up here. Repeat after me, Jesus. I hear you. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I'm saved today in Jesus' name. Lord Almighty, I pray for these two girls who have stand up and receiving you as the Savior, your Savior, as their Savior and Lord. I seal it in Jesus' mighty name. Even for this young girl, maybe not understanding what she has done, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that it has happened. And the devil will never take it out of your hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus.